for our program this afternoon. Um, we have, I'm going to say it again, Charlie Ordilla, Ordilly. Ordilly, yes. and Amy Gabrilla. I've got them, yeah. I meshed yeah. those names. Okay, they're here from Game Sense, and I think they're going to make this program fun. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as, just a reminder, as always, um, they're filming for Walpole Media. So if you have a question, make sure you raise your hand so they can bring the microphone over to you so we can hear your question. Okay, am I giving it to Amy or Charlie? All right, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. And I just want to say straight off, I am so excited to be with you today. This is the first in-person presentation we've gotten to do since before the pandemic. So it's super exciting just to be able to see your faces. So I just want to thank you for that. So today, we are from GameSense, and we're going to give you a little bit of pres presentation on gambling, um, both for older adults and for veterans. I'm assuming we have some, uh, yep, veterans, veterans. Just had a beautiful presentation for them earlier from what I saw. So that's great. Uh, just a tiny bit of background. My name is Amy. I come from a lot of years in the casino business. Um, about 18 years, I worked for the operators. I worked in Mississippi, Ohio, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. So I have a lot of years in this business. I've enjoyed it all. Uh, I now work for GameSense, so I can come out and talk to great people like you about how fun gambling can be and making sure we keep it that way. And I'm going to pass it on to my buddy Charlie so he can do a quick introduction of himself, and then we'll get started. Thanks, Amy. Hello, everyone. Uh, like Amy said, my name is Charlie Erdilly. I am a senior Game Sense advisor, advisor with the Mass Council on Gaming and Health. Uh, my office is right down the road at the Plain Ridge Park Casino. So if any of you guys are, you know, happen to visit there, come by, say hello. We're always there. Um, <laughs> a little bit about myself. My, myself as well as Amy, we both have uh, many experience in the business. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit more than Amy, a little older than Amy, too. So, um, but uh, I'm also a veteran. I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So you're welcome. And thank you, everyone here who served. Um, I, and so we're going to about get about ready to get started. So here we go. All right. So we did those introductions. So for today, guys, and I don't mean, you know, you don't have to read all this, but we're basically going to talk about what gambling is. Why do older adults like to play? Why do veterans like to play? Probably for a lot of the same reasons everybody does, but we'll break that down. What does it look like when you're having fun? When you don't have any issues with the gambling, when you're having a good time? What might it look like if it's not fun anymore? <clears throat> we'll talk about sometimes the loss of connectivity um, can, can lead to possible issues with gambling. And we'll talk about the fact that even though most seniors and veterans play for fun, there is a segment of populations that can run into trouble. And we want to make sure you guys are aware of what that could look like. And to end it all, who are we? What do we do? And how can we entertain you guys, educate you guys, keep it fun? And that's our presentation for today. So the first thing I want to ask all of you, or somebody who's brave enough to answer, if I was to ask you what, what, what's the definition of gambling? Having fun. <laughs> having fun, losing, <laughs> that's totally a possibility. Well, just having fun, getting away from, I haven't been to, since the lockdown. And I don't really miss it, but I'm, I'm anxious to go again. Okay. You know? But just getting in there and forgetting about everything, you know? Sure. And it can be, you know, but if you go with a certain amount and you use your noggin, you know, yeah. Right, so everybody, it's a tough world we live in, right? It is. It is, for a lot of different reasons. So getting that little escape, like you said, getting yep. in there, maybe sit at a machine, get, forget for a little yeah. bit, have yeah. a good time. Yeah. Excellent, all excellent answers. I would say it's losing money I don't have to lose. <laughs> would be your definition. So you're risking something, right? There's, a, there's an inherent risk involved, right? 
you can make a lot of friends, right? It's very social, right? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't know you, you bond, right. Yeah. Sure. So this is the definition we like to use. Uh, we heard a lot of this kind of throughout here. Risking something of value, typically money, but doesn't have to be, on the outcome of an event when the probability of winning is uncertain, right? We're, we're, we're risking something. Um, so whether it's me risking my favorite Red Sox cap that uh, they're going to beat the Yankees, that, that's important to me, right? The, my favorite hat. So it could be money, it could be anything. But definitely very good answers, you guys. I appreciate the uh, participation. So there are different forms of gambling. You guys know there's a lot of stuff to choose from, right? Mm -hmm. Charlie's gonna talk to you a little bit about the two main categories. So like Amy said, the uh, different forms of gaming are uh, ch first, first form is chance-based games, right? They're like lottery. Uh, slot machines, uh, roulette, craps, bingo. There's no skill involved. It's just basically pull the handle, put, put your money in, pull the handle, or you know, listen for your number to be called and you, and you mark your ticket, right? There's no skill involved whatsoever. You can't practice playing a slot machine, right? And then there's skill-based games. Uh, poker, um, blackjack, for instance, uh, sports betting, uh, which is coming soon to uh, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, so those, those games are in, involve some skill. There's still chance involved. You know, you still need to get those cards and different things, but um, you, know, you can practice playing. And, and the more knowledge you have with those games can increase your chances of winning. So we know from a big study that we did here in the state that seniors like to play. Absolutely, right? So 72% of seniors gambled in the past year. Keeping in mind, guys, the study was done before the casinos opened. So I'm very anxious and curious to see as they do follow-up studies after the casinos are here and possibly even sports betting, how this might change any of this research. 32% of seniors gamble yearly, 19% monthly, and 21% weekly. And then according to this study, a Bedford VA uh, pilot study, this was for veterans who b were being treated for, uh, at the, the center. 33% uh, of uh, mass veterans gambled within the last year. And then 8% of those um, in the study screened positive for problem gambling. Okay. Quick, I have a question. Yes. Uh, when they say problem gambling, what do they mean by problem gambling? Uh, People that, um, gonna yeah, we're going to get to that, but, uh, you know, uh, people that are struggling, uh, that they're having issues with the family uh, because of their gambling or, or, you know, their finances because of their gambling. They're technically not keeping it fun. Okay. Okay. So how many people like to gamble? Even if it's once in a while, maybe hit the casinos a bingo. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you. <laughs> so why do you why do you gamble? Like what's I, I know you kind of talked about it earlier. Yeah, having fun. Yep, That's having fun. fun. Somebody you know, said meeting people, people, kind of like getting that. Um, getting out of the house, something yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. Anybody to win money? Yeah. Specifically. It's fun to win money. <laughs> right. <I'll> win <laughs> I like the answer though because you said when you win it, right? When you win. Sometimes you're gonna, sometimes you're gonna, and that's fantastic. It's always a nice surprise, right? That being said, if your primary goal is because you need money, then you might want to just kind of take a look and see, because unfortunately I wish everybody could win money every time, right? But that's, that's not how it goes, and especially as people struggle during the pandemic, getting back on their feet, this can become an option for folks that might not be the best one. That could be the case too. That could be the case too. So 32% seniors to win money, 27 for that recreation and that bonding, 18% to support worthy causes. So that would be like charity poker or bingo, 15% uh, again to socialize. 
and four to escape. We are escape. Um, so these are the, the biggest reasons. And again, all I would say is that money thing, be a little careful, and also the escape. Even though we all do something to escape, right? Well, some people read books, some people go fishing, they play golf, they go shopping, they gamble, maybe they head to the bar for a little karaoke, who knows what people do. Never a bad thing, but if we escape too far in and we do start harming ourselves and the escape becomes worse than the problem we were escaping, we just want to watch out for that. So uh, very similar, vet, why do veterans gamble, right? For the entertainment, like everyone said, to relieve stress, um, you know, just get away, uh, relieve that stress, blow off some steam, to cope uh, with the trans uh, transition to civilian life, um, that rush, the adrenaline rush, throwing that, you know, seven on a craps game, something like that, just the, the excitement, um, the escape, like we said, uh, depression, depressed, just want to get away, just, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, boredom, nothing else to do, right? Uh, I'll just go to the casino or, you know, play some scratch ticket, whatever, just because there's nothing else to do. And then again, uh, for money, right, to win money. Uh, so what games do, what games do you enjoy playing? Mostly slots. Slots, slots, anyone else? They are popular, oh yeah. Poker, blackjack. Anybody? Sliders. Trotters, right? Okay, the trotters, uh, harness racing. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So there's so many different forms of gambling. Lottery. I like the poker tables, but yeah, they don't like you. They, they, you know, they used to have two dollar poker tables like at at Foxes. I bet they don't anymore. I mean, down there in New York. I don't think the poker room is open. Or no, they. I think they just recently. Yep, they just recently opened it. Okay. Right. Yeah. make a very good point. You know, it, it's fun to play different games and have a variety, but you're thinking the right way. You might like it, but if you can't afford it because the tables are 25, I can't do that. Oh. I don't know. I see people all the time. Yeah. But, you know, with that much of, of a bet that you need, that's tough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially with the dog. With the dog track. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's go to Wonderland near the dog. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Kind of fun. My right. granddaddy used to take them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 I think there's only uh, one state or two states now that allow uh, dogs racing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Young man had his hand up. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> I had experience in the Navy. You shoot a lot of craps. Yes, you do. And I got paid one day, and I shot craps, <laughs> and I lost worse. I lost it all. <gasps> and so that's my expression goes, once burned, twice shy. I never gambled again. Good for no you. Kidding. Good for you. Good for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I needed Stuff. that money. And I didn't have much, right. but a bad experience. Yep. Oh. What would happen? What do you think might have happened if you won that money on the first time? I'm glad I didn't. Exactly right. You might have been back uh, ever since. Yeah. Hey, this is easy, right? Yeah, truthfully, and early big wins for people. I mean, it sounds like it should be a great thing, right? And in, in one case it is, but what it does psychologically mm -hmm. is make you think that, hey, yeah. this, I can do this again. You know, this is easy. I can hit the slot machine again. And unfortunately, it's not. You know, take those big wins when you get them, but look at it. Exactly. Especially down at Twin River, I think it's going to be 18. 18 yeah. years old. You yep. see kids down there, and, you know, here I am with my 60 cent bet in the machine $4, $5, mm -hmm. and I'm going, are your parents paying this or what? I mean, where are you getting right. money? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw kids yeah. from the local colleges. I, I was a dealer down there for a bit on roulette games betting hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. yes. You wonder, where, where do they come from? Yeah. Yep, and we just hope that it's not coming out of their tuition money or book money or rent money, but yeah. we don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. And all we can do is try to get the word out to them and hope they don't do any harm to themselves. All right, so you guys said slots were up there, table games. We had the trotters. All right, so... By numbers, and this should make sense, 62% of seniors play lottery. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that should make sense is, number one, it's easy accessibility, right? I mean, any store. And number two, this state, the Bay State, has the most lucrative lottery in the world. We give out the most money. We take in the most money. 
Okay, so it makes sense. Massachusetts, y'all, how often you go to a gas station? Yeah. Somebody in front of you scratch, uh, buying tickets or somebody in the parking lot scratching tickets in the car, right? So very, very popular. 35% enjoy raffles. 20% enjoy coming to see me and Charlie in the casino. 4.5% bingo and 35 on the trotters, on the horse racing. Us? Because nobody can see you doing this. It's kind of a private thing with the lottery. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Right, you're not out and you're you're doing. And honestly, one of the things coming now, if sports betting comes, a lot of that's going to be internet online, and possibly even casino style games coming up online at some point. So again, you have that anonymity, right? You can do it from your own home. Yeah. And on the one hand, we want adults to have access to whatever enjoyment they want. On the other hand. It can be scary because it's a lot easier to overdo it, possibly if you have no safeguards in check. IPads. Yep, very easy. Yep. <laughs> really? That's so, um, so, uh, so veterans like to play. Thirty-one percent like to play um, the scratch tickets. Very popular. Like Amy was saying, you can go to any almost any convenience store uh, and get scratch tickets or a lottery. There's about sixty-five hundred lottery retailers in the state so basically it's every corner you can go buy a, a lottery ticket right so 25 percent of those play the traditional lottery <coughs> excuse me um which are the numbers the daily numbers weekly numbers mega bucks um, anything like that and then 10 percent preferred card games ca casino style games right cougar blackjack yep uh some couple uh Quick tips, gambling should never be about making money. We, we can continue to say that, that that's very important. Uh, play for fun and entertainment, not because you need to win. And if a win happened, that's great, enjoy it, right? Uh, but you should hope to, hope to win, but always expect to lose, right? Uh, what does fun and happy gambling look like? Good time. Being a winning. Yep. Yep. What about things like budgeting? Like, if you're playing, you know, fun and happy and healthy, what kind of like um, little tidbits of advice would you give yourself when you go play? Use your ATM card. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Leave your ATM card at home. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we play, say I'm going to just play twenty dollars or whatever. Yep. Whatever it is for you. Else goes in your pocket. There you Perfect. go. So you're Very good. Kind of budget for yourself. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, win limit, love exactly. It. When, it is <laughs> when you hit, you leave. <laughs> hit big and leave. <laughs> exactly right. You know, we talk about budgets for people all the time, and people are getting very much better yeah. at setting like a loss limit and or a budget. Win limits are just as important, and it's very tough. Because how do you tell somebody who just won $500 in 10 minutes? Hey, go home, because what, what happens in our head? You gotta win again. Oh, you gotta win again. That would be my super big day, right? If this happened in 10 minutes. So if we could just get folks to leave, even if it was a little bit. So totally acceptable. You win 500 on a slot. You just got there. You got 10 minutes. You got really lucky. That's amazing. If you cannot do that, you can't cheat. You wait until three days. Put, put a certain amount aside in your pocket. Your right, right. exactly. Guarantee that you're going to leave with something. Exactly. Right? You yeah, guys are. You guys could teach this. <laughs> I can tell you a quick story. Oh, there was, story. A, there was a woman sitting next to me at Twin Rivers a couple weeks ago, and she had $800 in the top of her machine, you know, the Mr. Cashman, mm -hmm. and she's sitting there, and she's $3 a hand, $3 a hand, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. She lost every penny of the money going for a $500 top when she has $800 in the machine, lost that, pulled out another $100 bill and stuck it in, and I was sick to my stomach. I was like. Right, but they're on, but they're, they're on that roll. They think it's gonna be their big day. It doesn't happen. Not often. I mean, I would argue. Some people got lost. Yeah, and it's gonna, listen, if nobody ever won, these places wouldn't be open, right? What was she, what was she doing? She was chasing the jackpot. But yeah. she had over the jackpot. She had $800. She got it up to over 1000 playing and still sat there. And I, 
I sat there for two hours watching her until every penny was, was gone. gone. And I guess that she pulled out another hundred dollar bill and stuck it in there. And I was like, oh, that, that's oh, oh. Well, and I will tell you, sometimes for folks that are experiencing gambling related harm, it's not even about the money anymore. Yeah. It's about the play. Um, so for her, if, you know, if she falls into that category where it's more about the play, that could be a possibility because right. It doesn't make sense to you I'm why you would be money, yeah. put, you know, $1,100 in my pocket and took a hundred dollars and would have gone back for that. But I wouldn't start. And that's a smart move. Yeah. You that's a smart move. That sort of money in a machine. Yep. Because the longer you play and we'll talk about this. The longer you play, the more likely the house edge, which is the casino's advantage, is going to come into effect. That's absolutely right. Or more. Yeah. All right, so you guys said this. All right, having a budget. And not just having a budget. A lot of people make a budget, but then what happens? We forget about it. We have selective memory, right? We go visit the ATM. Sure. And listen, there's going to be times, maybe you have 100. That's the budget you set. But maybe you did overtime that week or something happened where you had extra money and you, th you think to yourself, can I afford this this week? And maybe you can, and that's fine if you're not doing any harm to yourself. But always have that conversation with yourself honestly and try to stick with that budget. Setting win limits we talked about. Get out, right? It's hard enough to win, you guys. gym if we become too obsessed with it isn't necessarily a good thing right everything balanced in life you guys are great and i didn't hear this one taking breaks now that's assuming you're in the casino for a decent amount of time or you're gambling or whatever you're doing make sure you keep that mind charged and that body you can't get off that machine it's good i did <laughs> so we have an answer to one of our questions coming up you're too small. Yeah, cool. what's, your, what's your name, my friend? Barbara. Barbara, we're going to take you on our next tour. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Over 63% of seniors gamble recreationally, absolutely no problems. And then another significant chunk don't gamble at all. So there, uh, yep. So there's only a very small amount, you know, that we want to be kind of looking at and make sure they have the information. All right, I'll let Charlie take this guy. So we, got a, we have a guide here to fun and healthy gambling. So balance, right? Keeping gambling in balance with other activities and priorities and responsibilities, like we said, oh, there's other things to do. Informed choice, exercise informed choice over gambling, understanding the associated risk and knowing the likelihood of winning or losing. So know what you're playing. Know, you know, know about that slot machine. Know, you know, the, you know what's good table games to play uh, as opposed to a... I don't want to say a bad table games to play, but your odds, you know, roulette, for instance, you know, it's like, a, you know, it's over a 5% house advantage. Blackjack, it's only a 1%. So, you know, if, if you're, you're a little knowledgeable, you kind of, you may want to play, you know, the game with a lower house advantage, correct? And then control, staying in control of the gambling uh, through self-regulation, knowing when to stop, knowing when to take that break, get up, go. Um, enjoyment, uh, we keep saying that, keep it fun. Because if it's not fun, it could be it could be a problem, right? And then harm free, the absence of gambling related harm to yourself and to others. So, if someone has a a, a gambling problem or is at risk, um, that problem does not only affect the gambler; it could affect their family, uh, their finances. You know, they're not being able to pay the rent. It could you know, affect their business, if they own a business, you know, we've seen a lot of different, you know, we're going to, we'll touch on to this a little more, but we've seen a lot of people uh, that had a problem that, you know, lost their business or their marriage or whatever due to their gambling issues. 
You know, a lot of times people say, uh, you know, I have, um, you know, I have a financial problem. Well, your financial problem was from your gambling problem, is, you know, so. Uh, so uh, the good part, because just so we're all clear, we didn't tell you guys this, we are gaming neutral. We are not here to tell folks not to play. We're not here to tell folks to play. We are here to suggest that it is a perfectly legit and fun activity. And we just want to make sure you stay having fun and have a positive relationship with gambling. So there is a bright side. There's some research out there that suggests that gambling for seniors on a recreational or even a moderate level can actually do some good things. So some of the impacts, activity levels, like people said, getting out there, um, maintaining that socialization, again, connecting with people, stimulating the brain and increasing cognitive function. Listen, I've seen people playing bingo with 10 cards and I'm sitting there going, and just the dexterity and the, I'm like, whoa, and improving those motor skills as well. So there are some positive things that can come from this activity for seniors. All right, so we just talked about what good gambling looks like. So what do you think a problem might look like? Somebody that lost everything, I heard. I've seen people, mostly men, slamming their shoes with a fist. Okay, so. Swearing at the top of their lungs and. So visibly getting nasty. upset. I've actually had to say something to one of the people on the floor, saying, I can't listen to this guy anymore. Yeah. Scary. Sure. Scary for you. You never know if they're it's threatening, right, sure. You know, it's like, and obviously something's going on in their head with the with the gambling that's causing that that strong reaction. I've seen, uh, you know, I was, my last operations job was at Fox News. I was there for almost 30 years. You know, as a casino manager, I've seen players, uh, players that. Exactly, and uh, I came from a small town outside of Atlantic City, about 30 miles west of Atlantic City. We had a, uh, a little tire store. Guy owned a tire store. It had, you know, it was his family's business. His father had it, and it was like one, one or two bays. They got it up to, it was like six bays. He had 20 employees. Four years after Atlantic City opened, he lost everything. So what did it do? It was a small town. 20 people that worked there are out of work because he lost his business. So it just doesn't affect the gambler. It affects people around them as well. So signs that gambling is not fun anymore, right? Preoccupation with gambling. I got to go to the casino or I got to go buy some scratch tickets, right? The need to bet increased amounts of money for the same excitement. They're putting 50 cents in a machine. This is fun. Eh, a few weeks later, it's not fun anymore. I need to put more money. You know, I need to get that same rush, right? So for any of you guys that have known anybody in your lives with a substance use issue, what? same type of thing. So anybody that oh, has dealt with alcoholism yeah. or oh, opiates, yeah. you know, so again, needing more. Now that's a chemical, it's not behavioral like gambling is, but the same thing happens in your brain. You just need more and more. Did somebody have a question? Repeated attempts to cut back control or quit gambling, right? They just can't stop. They try, but they can't stop. And so many people think of it as just a moral weakness. We know now that gambling affects the brain in the same way that substance use disorders do, right? So it's not just a matter of you're just not strong enough. It's just gambling, just stop and you're, you're good, right? Uh, it's, it's 
unfortunately not that simple to fill out. Yeah. Gambling through escape negative feelings or emotions, like we said earlier. Again, we're not necessarily talking about, God, I just watched the news tonight. I gotta go, I gotta go play the slot first. <laughs> we're talking about really, really spending a lot of time escaping from whether it's losses, whether it's uh, chronic illness, whether it's the news, whether it's holiday, it could be anything mm -hmm. nowadays. Loss of a loved so we're one. We're talking you know, over a long period of time, not one night out that I gotta just you know, blow off some steam. Chasing those losses like earlier, like running to that ATM machine, like you said, just to get more money to get back in action, you know. Uh, or betting more money just to get money back the money you lost. How many times have you guys heard somebody say, or maybe you have, if I could just get my hundred bucks back, I swear to God I'll leave here, and they don't come back, right? Yeah. We, have, we have poker at the DFW on Thursdays and, and Saturdays, and I'm in the lounge, and I see coming into our little ATM card, I mean, uh, machine, getting more money out there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with poker, they'll have a one rebuy or, or two yeah, rebuys or however they set it up. But yes, again, anytime we start, I see guys all the time in the casino, they probably spend more on the food going back to the ATM than I would spend gambling. Um, and it's, it's tough. It's all over the Yeah, it's all over yeah. the way. It's tough, you know? So that's why being honest with yourself about what you truly plan to spend and can afford to spend, then you go months where you're not taking dollars at a time 12 times right so a lot of this is about self-recognition about how much you want to play and how much you can afford to play lies or embellishes about their gambling right lying uh, you know gamblers you know problem gamblers they don't tell you how much money they lose they'll tell you how much money they win you know but they'll never tell you the truth about how much money they are, are losing uh, and then relies on others to give them uh, money to relieve the financial crisis or brought on by gambling, lending them money because of the gambling problem. With that being said, you know, sometimes you would lend money to a gambler to pay their bills. Does that money go to pay their bills? No, they're back in the casino trying to win more money. You know, just, it's not good. And then from the clinical side. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop them up for yeah. you. So four of these, uh, four more of these uh, signs uh, equal a gambling problem. That's from the DSM-5 uh, in 2013, I believe. 13 or 14. Yeah. yeah. So preoccupation with gambling, like we said earlier, needs to bet increasing amounts of money for the same thrill and excitement. Have re has repeated unsuccessful attempts control stop their gambling. Uh, becomes restless or irritable when attempting to stop. Uh, has jeopardized a loss or lost a significant relationship, job, education because of the gambling. Gamblers to escape those problems, to deal with that dysphoric mood. Uh, after losing money gambling, return another day to get even, you know, chasing those losses, like we said, and lies to family, friends, coworkers about the extent of their gambling, and then relies on uh, others to provide financial relief because of gambling, there they are. So for these, uh, or more of these signs, uh, can equal a gambling disorder, okay? All right, so what are some of the specific ri risk factors for seniors and veterans? Well, for seniors, anybody retired in here? <laughs> right. Okay, so a lot of folks are living on a fixed income of some sorts, whether it's a pension, social security, right? So they're not necessarily bringing in extra money you know, that, that maybe could make up for some of these losses. Sometimes you have more time than you expected. You know, people my age are always saying, God, I wish I could t retire right now, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll find once people retire, they go, God, I'm bored. Yeah. You know, because depending, yeah, I guess if I was a millionaire and I go travel everywhere and be retired, that's one thing, but I'm an average Joe, right? And I don't, I don't necessarily have, have the means for that. So it can, get, it can get boring and lonely. Loneliness or loss of networks. Um, again, maybe the kids are all grown, maybe they don't live near you, um, you know, you don't necessarily have those same social ties that you did. Coping with losses, unfortunately, the older we get, the more of them we tend to have. 
um, you know, whether it's folks passing on on us, whether it's chronic illness, um, even just the kids leaving and not being around anymore, there's, there's a lot of loss that can happen. You might not be able to do what you used to do. Maybe when you first retired, you played golf every weekend or some other physical thing that maybe now, because you get a bum knee or a bum hip or whatever the case is, now you can't do those things anymore as much. And then, unfortunately, and I'm already sensing this in my 45-year-old body, brain, we do have natural cognitive decline as we age. So these are some of the things that could, specifically for seniors, influence whether they may or may not develop any gambling-related harm. Isn't that the one I just did? There we go. Now, specifically, looking at you ladies, there is research specifically within the senior population on older women. Um, so according to AARP, older women are the fastest growing group that could develop issues with gambling. This is a quote from the head of the National Council on Problem Gambling, Keith White. The new face of problem gambling in America is a senior woman who has lost a spouse or become alienated from her children, but has embraced slot machines and quite rapidly develops an addiction. Okay, so not trying to frighten anybody, for sure, but it is definitely a population that we want to keep an eye on and make sure we keep educated and make sure we keep having fun and socialized, right? Loneliness can be tough when you're isolated. How, how many of you guys stayed at home during COVID and pretty much had no, not much? That was tough, right? I did not enjoy it. I like the time with my dogs, but that's about it. It's tough to be cut off. And sometimes people do that themselves on purpose and sometimes not. And you, you definitely need, you know, doing these kind of things on Zoom, not the same as getting to look at you guys' faces and, and have you respond and not have to be looking in the chat box, right? Technology. So some risk, uh, veterans at risk, males, right, number one. Uh, individuals prone to risk taking or sensation seeking, you know, after being in the military, you know, you, you do some, you know, you're, you're, you're at risk, basically. You're, you're doing things that are, uh, you know, exciting, um, you know, fun, dangerous, stressful, possibly. dangerous, you know, uh, you're used to those things. Uh, individual who use substances, like Amy said earlier, you know, uh, and then also uh, those who experience depression, stress, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Right, that tra trauma, uh, you know, can lead to um, a gambling, you know, disorder, just like any other. Uh, like uh, trauma can also lead to addiction on, um, you know, drugs or alcohol or anything like that. As well. Yep, there is a definitely a strong pull of current uh, between. So, by 2022, that's next year. Can't believe I'm saying that. Next year, one out of every four malls in this country will close its doors. Okay. So, I mean, that's that was kind of crazy to me. I mean, I know you know as online shopping, Amazon, all this, right? Uh, I'm guilty. I use Amazon. Uh, but as things become more available like that, a lot of the brick and mortar places we're used to just can't afford to stay open anymore. They're not getting the business. <laughs> Libraries, community centers, depending on the area of the country and the towns, are struggling, mostly due to financial reasons. So again, a lot of the places where seniors might gather, um, everybody really, but specifically we're talking seniors here, they're shutting their doors. And that's tough, again, that loss of connection. Casinos are always open, right? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are concerned about that trend because you know we really need to keep people connected and keep people mentally healthy and safe. And it is a little bit disturbing. And listen, casinos have been called the new senior center. 
open 24 hours a day. Entertainment, fun, stimulation, definitely are handicap accessible. They, and they take care of older adults. A lot of the promotions, a lot of the free play, a lot of the different things they do. Listen, they don't want to lose you. Super, super valuable demographic. The bread and butter, really. One in 10 seniors admitted spending more than they were comfortable with. So again, we want people to have fun, but if you're out there for the connection and it's one of the only places to go and you're spending more than you can afford, we want to look into that. 25% of people 65 or older visited casinos in 2012. that's a bad thing, but you already have people that have been isolated. They now have some place that's open where they can go, and alcohol was still being served, but now they only have the gaming. They don't have those places to go pick up rest, listen to some music, so it was definitely a concern. So seniors are a valuable demographic uh, to the casinos, or very, the casinos, uh, you know, promote seniors coming in it's very profitable for them as well right uh making older adults happy is a priority to the operators it's this you know uh free slot play whatever it is uh you know food vouchers you know things keep the keep the seniors happy why they'll come back they'll come back for more uh bus rides and transportation free transportation to the casino right and you get you know the free the, the free bets the food vouchers and then also the giveaways you know you come in on you know at you know 3 p.m. on Tuesdays you know you're eligible to win that two maybe right. uh, gambling can offer a, a feeling of connection gambling is often readily available and easy access uh, by both active duty and veterans right there's a you know casinos are in 48 states now I think it is something like that um, so, you know, it, there's, there's lottery in all but two states. Um, you know, so there's just gambling out there. There's just many forms of gambling that is accessible to everyone, I not just veterans. I read last year that said there is now no town in the United States. So whether it's close to New York City or in the middle of Wyoming, there's no town where gambling is more, access to gambling is more than three hours away. Right, so yeah, yeah it's here. And then most veteran centered establishments, the VFW, there's, you know, lottery, poker, Kino, yeah. all right. Uh, and then casinos offer those discounts, those special promotions uh, and player card upgrades to veterans, similar to, to the seniors, right? They're, they're going after that demographic as, as well. Uh, I'm going to hit that again. And then these two are uh, a couple promotions. Uh, actually coming up uh, in Ocean Casino in Atlantic City. For instance, you know, veterans come, show their card on Veterans Day to get free food, you know, discount uh, rooms, different things just to get them to come on in, right? It doesn't cost the casino any money to do that, believe it, you know. And then did you know that veterans are twice as likely to develop a gambling uh, disorder than the general population? So some trauma from the service. Right. Or exactly. Sure. Exactly. Sure. Very good answer. Yep. Very good. Yep. And then the, the, the prevalence with problem uh, of problem gambling in veterans, uh, lifetime prevalence rate uh, range from two percent uh, in veterans seeking any care in a VA facility to twenty nine percent to veterans seeking P PTSD uh, uh, treatment. That's a huge number, that 29%. And again, it's the trauma, you know, uh, that they, they, they did throughout their life. 
right? And then the prevalence rates of gambling problems of, among veterans receiving VA health care uh, were two to four times higher than the general population, like we said. Female and younger veterans were at even a higher risk. So we mentioned this a few minutes ago just a little bit, but again, what can cause the brain to become more vulnerable? Well, we said it a few times already, trauma, all right? Experiencing trauma or past violence, uh, and that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, whether it's somebody who experiences that trauma from active military duty, whether it's domestic violence, it can, it can be any different amount of traumas. Prolonged experience of stress or anxiety, again, can be due to any number of things for you individually. And then chronic pain and injury and illness certainly, certainly um, can have an effect on people. So all these different things, that's why we say those co-occurring things when you have those mental health issues, when you have substance use issues that stem from a trauma, the gambling can come into play. And you're right, that is probably partially the reason why veterans are twice as likely. And then again, older folks dealing with loss, same thing. So a couple things to remember, have fun. We've said it a hundred times, keep it fun, keep it positive, set limits, you know, take breaks. Like everybody said, you come in with what you can afford, you have fun, you go home, live to see another day. Can have beneficial effects, like we said, from cognitive function, uh, motor skills, keeping socialized. However, older adults and veterans do have risk factors. Social trends can influence that. Again, we live in an internet world, right? So a lot of things are changing very fast for all of us. Yes, my father, was, uh, he, he was a Marine in World War II. And when he came home, of course he got married and had children, but it was later in life he suffered his PTSD. Hmm. And you know what? That's when he started gambling. Oh yeah? During, during that period of time, during his PTSD. Interesting, he so it was like delayed. Delayed. By a lot. It did happen. And then, hmm. Now is that the first time you came to that realization? Like did it just occur to you? Just now, yes. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so those traumas do matter, whether they're immediate or sometimes folks bury them for a long time and they come out later. Older women are particularly at risk. And again, the signs of problematic play are exactly the opposite of healthy, not setting limits, not setting budgets, chasing losses, you know, having it interfere with any part of your life, that's important. Whether it's family, friends, occupation, school, any of those things. All right, listen, do you guys wanna take a quickie? I know we've been talking for a little bit. The second part of this is not nearly as long as the first, but if anybody wants like a five minute bathroom break, no, you guys are like, heck no, we're fine. Yeah? All right. All right, so the second part of this is gonna be a little bit about us and what we do and, and how we can uh, connect with you guys and keep this fun and safe. So GameSense, we are, like I said, a gambling neutral, responsible gaming brand. Again, not for or against. Legalized gambling. We all come from the business. We are mandated to be in every Massachusetts casino. So when they pass the law, be in every Massachusetts casino. Explaining the game programming and structure, uh, how do games work, you know, what, you know, what the odds are, different slot machines, what you know, the bonuses mean and different things like that. Uh, like the education gods, uh, the odds, and the including the house advantage, uh, the house edge, the house edges, you know, the edge that the house has over everyone. All those games, there's a house edge, you know. Some are bigger than the others, like I said. Uh, you know, Keno, for instance, it's about like 48% house advantage, right? It's fun, right? And it's fun. available. I play Keno. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, sir. Do some of these casinos, do the people that run the casinos, do they control the machines? They're, the, uh, they're, the, the odds are fixed. 
They don't control them per person who sits down or anything like that. They don't, they don't change them. Oh, we got a high roller coming in. We're going to, we're going to turn it, you know, we're going to turn it up a bit. No, they don't do that. Why must they need explicit permission from the regulator? So from yes. Mass Gaming Commission in this instance yes. to change any kind of so program. Well, the state, the state controls a certain percentage of it. That that's control. true to a degree. So in Massachusetts, the slot machines cannot be set at lower than an 80% return to players, which on the flip end means 20% profit for the casino, right? Mm -hmm. But they cannot go below that. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, I haven't seen anything that low. Yeah. There's um, they're about 92, yeah, 91, 91, 92%. Average, but that accounts for mm -hmm. every machine from pennies mm -hmm. to and they don't, uh, they don't want to take your money all, all at once anyway. Right. They want you, they want to keep they feeding you, feed you, line. yes, and, and have I you come back. I think some states that are illegal now. I mean, it's possible I cannot out speak out for other West, jurisdictions, yeah. you know, um, but I will tell you this, casinos generally don't want to mess with regulators because here's the thing, every game in the casinos has a house end. They are going to make money on every single game in there. Yeah. So, exactly right. if, they want to try to cheat or try to maybe skim a little bit more off and they want to try to get away with it. Not a very good idea because the possibility of huge fines or getting shut down when they're already going to make a profit just doesn't make sense. I'm not telling you it's never happened, yeah, yeah. Um, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Right? It would be like you trying to do that. If you had a business that was making millions or billions a year, why would you? You're good. If you're doing, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have people that believe that the machines are a perfect machine way but there are people i swear to say oh well after the 10 o'clock they start shutting down table game dealers who are going to take people's money and for a lot of people that's very hard it used to be very hard on me because there were specific times when I would know a lady would sit down you could tell it was that time of the month where she would get her she sat down I, could, I knew she was playing with that money and I take it in 10 minutes and you can just see the deflation on her face and I have to go home and try to live with that and it's very hard because I'm doing my job yeah. I don't have anything to necessarily be you know, upset about, but I'm a human being who feels things for uh, things for other human beings, right? And that's tough. It's very tough when you kind of know that's happening and you don't really have any means to stop it. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right, sir, and that's why me and Charlie came over to this. So we get to stay in the industry we grew up with and love, but we get to come at it from a different angle where we can actually help people and we can say things to people that, you know, might help them keep it fun and not have to worry about. They spend their last dollar, they're not, the next week they can't buy the food for themselves. That's right. right. And when we were in operations, like Amy said, you can't tell somebody, okay, it's time to leave yeah, because right. that's our job. You know, uh, you know, we knew it, see it. Now we can do that. Now we can actually, you know, we're there to help people. Yeah. It feels good. Yep. Yeah, uh, ah, here we go. <laughs> Young lady. <laughs> Anybody? If I almost hit a slot machine, uh, it is it is bound to hit. Should I keep playing? True or false? Well, well, there you go. Well, <laughs> there you go. Know. Yeah, it's an easy one. All slot machines are a random number generator. Uh, random number generator. That machine is constantly pushing out numbers, thousands of numbers a second. Once you hit that button or pull that lever, your fate is set. You know. It, it, yeah, we only show you the symbols for fun. <laughs> the computer already knows. Right. You know what's what's happening. Uh, one, one spin, uh, you know, uh, what occurs on one spin has no bearing on the other spins. Previous spin doesn't mean anything. Um, no slot machines are ever due, right? You know, it's, they're all the same. It might appear to happen that way on occasion. Right. You know, but, but that's just coincidence. It just happens right. to be that time. Yeah, you put that yep. money in the Yeah, the jackpot. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And near misses happen when a player only needs one more symbol or a single reel in order to win a large prize or a jackpot. That's like an old uh, uh, triple sevens machine. You got a seven, you got a seven, and then you got a seven right up here. Darn, I was so close. Let me put some more money in to try to, you know, because I'm going to hit this time. It doesn't work that way. Means nothing. You're no Means further that. away either. Right. You're not closer either. Right. Just let that one go. If yeah. you want to keep playing because you can and you can afford it and you're having fun, do it. But that kind of thing means absolutely nothing for you being closer. Exactly. Uh, and then we also encourage people, uh, Game Sense uh, aims to encourage people to develop and maintain a healthy, fun relationship with their gambling. race um, not something you want to do especially for gambling I mean if you're saving your house or something but for gambling never do, a good do idea. they have machines in military cases uh, overseas they do overseas they That's are absolutely a whole different uh, yep. I actually got to lobby on the hill about three years ago mm -hmm. two years ago um, for, a, for a bill that wants it so the short story is yes there's machines on overseas bases. And yes, the government makes a lot of money off them, but then when guys, when our military gets home, we don't provide any help and resources for issues they may have developed yeah. playing overseas. And there's not a lot so of study. So was kind of talking about yeah. that. Yeah, but there's yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's not a lot of studies because done. what happens in the military, a lot of times, I mean, sometimes you're in some pretty crazy, scary action, but mm -hmm. what are you doing a lot of the time? Downtime. Right? Downtime, right? Yep, downtime. So what are you going to do? Well, sometimes we're going to have an effect on wife and our children. Right? We don't have any food. Right? Exactly, That's exactly right. right. That's exactly like we yep. said, gambling problems don't just affect the individual. It could be the family, the, uh, the employer, uh, the person who's uh, the landlord, mm -hmm. uh, the community. Yeah. It could be any number yeah. of folks. But there's so many, you know, there's so many, don't even, in the United States, you don't really even need slots on a, on a military base because you go right down the road yeah. in, in – uh, for instance, in Groton, Connecticut, the sub base in Groton, right? It's five miles, four miles from Foxwoods, right? So, yep. Yep. exactly. For the same thing across the river as Mohegan Sun. So, it's we're all very close. Yep. Um, plan how long you would like to play uh, before you play, before you start, and then set those time limits, right? You know, have a plan when you go in. You know, I'm going to play for three hours. You know, that's my plan for the day. Win, lose, or draw. I'm out of here. Um, take those frequent breaks, right? Get up, clear the head, get a cup of coffee, get a beverage, you know, go talk to your friend, something, whatever it may be. Come see us at GameSense. Come see us at GameSense, right? Uh, don't, do not borrow money to gamble, right? And don't chase those losses, like we said. Accept them as the price of entertainment, right? Uh, and then balance gambling with other fun and leisure activities. Yep, we're play my about, way. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Are we the only state that does that? Yes, in the United States. That, that's, that's, that's a program, it's a big program in British Columbia. Um, yeah, there's different versions of it, not called the same thing. Canada um, has different. What is it called? Uh, uh, play safe or something or can't something like that. But yes, over, in other countries, there are different versions of this, but we are definitely the only place in the country. 
Mm-hmm. That has it, and we're going to talk about it in just a second. Yep. Ah, just a second. Just a second. <laughs> See, that's uh, so. Uh, so we also promote. We have these different tools. So Game Sense aims to offer programs that allow us players to make informed choices, stick to them. One way we do that is through Play My Way uh, initiative, and that is uh, that's me. Um, and it's a it's a voluntary budgeting tool. Right, so what you can do is you can set a budget uh, daily, weekly, or monthly, how much you're gonna spend, right? Say just for instance, you wanna set your budget at $100 for the day. Um, and this is, and it, right now it's only on slot machines. Uh, so you wanna set it for $100. Uh, what it'll do, you get halfway to your budget, it'll tell you to, uh, hey, I'm, you're halfway there to your budget. So it gives you an opportunity, it doesn't, it doesn't stop you from playing. Um, but you might say, hey, you know what, I'm halfway through my budget. Uh, maybe it's time to take that break. Take a walk around, get some fresh air, get some coffee. Um, uh, then it'll re remind you at 75% and then it'll also remind you at 100% of your budget. It don't tell you, that it won't make you stop, but it gives you something to think about. Um, and the cool thing about this is, Come to play, right? it's going to be soon to be at uh, MGM Springfield, which hopefully by the end of the year, early January. Um, but right now, if you come to Plain Ridge and you want to sign up for that program, we give you a five dollar food voucher from one of the restaurants at, uh, uh, at Plain Ridge uh, to, for signing up. So, what do we have now? We got to have, do we have any idea how many people we got? It should pop up 25. Oh, no, it's not going to pop up. Yeah, we have about 25,000 people signed up. It's, this casino is open, absolutely. Oh, okay, because I had heard something nope. back when they had the, they were going to change the name of the club. No, they're open. They're, they just actually just opened a poker room the other well, day. They're yep. pretty much full swing yep. right now. I love the day. Yeah, if you yeah it's a nice down, casino. If you down there, please stop and say it's hi. Down. That's where I'm out of. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Like Amy's is, oh, yeah. yep, oh, actually, yeah. when you get off the elevator at uh, MGM, Amy Center is right to the left. Uh, definitely stop by. We do basket raffles every month, play little games. Yeah, if you're ever in the area, yeah. come, stop by. Thank you. Oh, I yeah. haven't heard that one. A little oh. bit out there, but yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yep. I'm there. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah. sure. What time okay. you have? Well, I'm virtually inviting you. Thank like you. Mm -hmm. How are they actually doing for the community? They actually just, I'm not going to quote it because even though I've heard some of it because I don't remember exactly. But the big study that we've taken some of this from, they just did a follow-up. It's called the Social and Economic Impacts of Gaming in Massachusetts. Right. And they did for the three towns. So for Plainville, Springfield, and Everett, Everett. <laughs> they did do a big research project on what the impact so far have been of the casinos being there. So everything from you know rental prices, traffic, uh, you know, all crime, crime employment, all anything like that. Right, both the positive and or yeah. negative. Yep. Again, I don't want to quote it, but I believe yep. if you go to the Stigma site, which is done by UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. it's S-T-I-G-M-A, I believe they have at least executive summaries yep. of yep. that stuff up. So what town are you in? I'm in Springfield. Springfield. Yep, yep. Yep. But good question, but yes, there is info on that, and they are definitely tracking it to see what impacts the casinos have yes. had. Economic development for the past year <laughs> must be good. I mean, yeah. I've been there, and I've seen the area that was revitalized. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. restaurants opening around there and different things going on. And it's about the yeah. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere, really. I, I can't say that. In Plainville, and if you open at night, you open at night. 
right? right. That's, yeah. So, so yeah, they are definitely tracking. Uh, Massachusetts definitely, we have a very, very robust, you know, the Gaming Commission wanted to make sure that we right. were really paying attention to how this affected everybody right. in Mass, yeah. from, from the citizens to the business, yeah. to the, the, the daily crime, the construction, yeah. everything. And the, the only thing I... Sure. Now, <coughs> that being said, I see plenty of folks of all age groups and, 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 and different demographics play them, and they know them by yeah. heart, and they know what they're doing. No, I can't do that. I yeah. 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 Is, it, is it really a penny slot machine? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. You can't even pay a one penny on a penny slot yeah. machine. I don't, know. I don't know. There's a couple. I don't know if they're anymore. Yeah, I don't think they do them anymore. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Do you say uh, casinos are, are safe now for COVID? Because I haven't yep. been with one since. Yep. Uh, I think so. I mean, we've been yeah. in there. We've both been in there yeah. since July. Do people have yep. to wear masks? Um, uh, M MGMs, they have to still have to wear masks. The patrons do not, but the employees do. Oh, okay. So... Um, if you're vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask. Anyone unvaccinated, you have to wear a mask. So we got something yeah. for you before you, you leave. Do. Just make sure you're washing your hands, you got your yeah. sanitizer. Well, that yeah, I think they actually just started, since they started over. Really? Yep. And I've been to Foxes, I've been to Mohegan, I've been to Plainridge, and Plainridge yeah. fun. Yeah, please. If you you know if you have the means and you want to go have well, a little fun, come by and see us. Thank you. I'm supposed to be somewhere too. I'm no worries. No worries. <laughs> it was. You, thank you so much. You're welcome. Very good Bye. insight. Good questions. Appreciate it. So. Um, you got this? So one of the ways that we support, and you know, this is tough because this means people are experiencing some harm, which we never like to see. But we offer what's called the Voluntary Self-Exclusion Program, and, and we are the ones that will administer that paperwork with folks. Um, so basically what this means is they want to take themselves out of the casinos in Massachusetts for a certain amount of time because they've recognized at this point that this is causing them issues. They want to take a break. So again, folks like me and Charlie will walk people through this paperwork. If they decide it's time to take a break, it can be completed at the casinos with us, at our centers. It can also be at a selected off-site location, possibly, if folks don't want to come to the casino. Or we can actually do it remotely now. Uh, we can do it via a Zoom platform, 24 hours a day. So if people need the help, we're going to make sure we give them as much access and make it as easy for them as possible. Um, and again, we don't want to force people to come into the casino necessarily to do it, right? Because that could be a trigger. You know, we certainly don't want somebody to come in with the intention of doing an exclusion, but they stop stop off first at a slot machine, spend 500 bucks, right? If this is what they want to do, we want to make it as easy as possible. So once they're enrolled, they cannot gamble at any casino in the state of Mass. So right now we have three. If we decided to build another one and it fell during their time of exclusion, they also would not be able to gamble there. This also would include the racetracks and paramutual. So right now, what do we have? Raynham, Suffolk Downs. Yeah. Yeah. Is it now? 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so, but I'm not 100%. But anyway, it would be where Paramutual is as well. And also any affiliates of the casino. So Penn National Gaming runs Plain Ridge Park. They don't do a single casino exclusion. So if you're excluded from one Penn property, it's all of them um, nationally. So, you know, we certainly let people know if you're going to go on vacation, if you're planning on being somebody somewhere, definitely check on that. Um, it's the same for when MGM has a slightly different policy where you can't gamble in mass. You can gamble at their properties out of state. You're on what's called a self limit list. I won't even bore you guys with that one. If you do ever have any questions about it though, please let us know and we'll get into it. So how it works, they can enroll for one year, three year or five years. We do offer a lifetime, but they have to complete one of these other terms first, right? Because we don't want this to be a mistake for somebody. What happens when you lose a lot of money at the casino? How do you feel? Depressed, Depressed maybe angry, mm -hmm. mad at yourself, mm -hmm. maybe. Do we, an hour ago? Yeah. Do we make real good decisions when we're upset? No. Some people can. I'm not real good at it, right? We want people to be in a level spot. Um, so a lot of times if we're dealing with somebody that just lost a lot of money, they're really upset, they're going to say what? Get me out of here forever. I don't ever want to see this place again, right? <laughs> right. So we want to make sure, yes, if somebody wants an exclusion, we'll want to do that for them. But we also want to make sure they're doing the right thing for them at the right time, that they're actually thinking about what's realistic for them and what's going to work. They will not receive any marketing or promotional stuff anymore. So all those emails you get or the mailers, you know, for free slot play or giveaways should be cut off if they sign up. All rewards points that they have on a player's card will be vacated. <coughs> Individuals who have completed their exclusion term are not automatically removed. <coughs> Charlie, can you take sure. it? Sorry, I got a little. So what that means is um, when you're done, when your term is up, they say you had a one year term, uh, when that term expires, you, you need to come in to see a game sense advisor and we do a reinstatement session. And at that reinstatement session, we'll talk to you, how did the program work? Do you need any additional resources? Anything like that um, before, you know, we let you, we allow you to go onto the gaming floor. Okay, it's just, a, it's just where we can see where you're at and how the program helped you basically. Um, and they must request that they be removed uh, after they have their, completed their term and become eligible. You can't, once you sign up for that term, whether, whatever the term may be, there's no coming off of it until the end of it after you do. You can't, if you sign, see, if you sign up for a year and in six months later he says, I'm, I, I'm done, I'm okay now, I'm gonna go to the casino. No, that, that's not how it works. You gotta complete the term. It's a legal binding document with the state. Mm -hmm. So we decide one year, two years, three Correct. Years. Yep. yep. We just wanna make sure again that people understand the commitment they're making. We make sure they understand all the legalese in the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Um, what they can and cannot do. And again, if somebody's coming at this very heated, we want to try to get them into a more calm spot so they can make a good decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a tool to help people, not something people regret. Right. Right. So making sure that they understand exactly, you know, how it's going to go. Because like Charlie said, once you're in, you're in. Yeah. Once it's processed. Yeah. Um, Until the year. Yeah. Out. And then even then, people, so again, do a one year and you never request like it says here to come off you will stay there indefinitely until you make the decision to call us on that thing tomorrow so mm -hmm. you could essentially make a one year a lifetime if you just never came back right that being said you're never going to make a five year or one year yeah. right so we just want to make sure if people are using this in the appropriate way for themselves at this time that they're truly understanding themselves and what they're ready for we will say it's a positive thing and it has proven very positive. And that, and when, when people sign up for a voluntary self-exclusion, when we're there talking to them, we're not only just doing the paperwork and helping them do it, we are providing them information and resources if they need it, if they want it for GA or any self-help uh, groups or anything like that. Care counseling, private clinicians. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot that we a lot, do. A lot, lot of information that we can provide. We have our own 
uh, exclusion liaison. She's uh, in long-term recovery, so she knows exactly what yes. this is like. So she's a very good person that they can connect with. Um, but yeah, you guys know, it takes a village sometimes, and, and when you're in trouble in life, the more support and people you have around you to help you, the better your chances are. You, you know, you fall off the wagon and decide to go to, yeah, I'm going to sneak into the casino. What do you think it happens to? Massachusetts, there's nothing. We, the casino will escort you out. You will come and talk to us. So we will ask you if you need any, you know, different resources or different things like that. And uh, we, you know, you go to other jurisdictions that, Tiver, uh, Rhode Island, for instance, uh, Twin River, uh, they have a voluntary self-exclusion program. And if you violate it, they, they, they arrest you for trespassing. Massachusetts, it's not that way. Because, like Amy said, we're there to help. We're not, you know, people have problems. Yes, what's up, Mark? We stigmatize that this is some kind of criminal. Listen, right. folks are reaching out for help. We're not all perfect, right? I've tried to, I've been trying to lose these 30 hamburgers for a long time, right? It's not easy. Uh, you know, but when people, you know, want resources and need help, we want this to not be a punitive issue. We want this to be a public health issue where we can connect folks to what they need. So in Massachusetts, like you said, no criminal trespass. No one's going to be walking out in handcuffs. That being said, the operators do reserve the right to do an involuntary exclusion, like banning you from their property. But again, no criminal. Right. No criminal okay. charges. Now, now, how do they, how do they know? They Well, yeah, but if you don't use you, a card, if you don't use a card, there's still everybody who goes to get the voluntary self-exclusion. What do we do? We take their picture. Yeah. Picture is shared with the casinos and the, and the regulators. Mass picture is shared with the casinos and the, and the regulators. Massachusetts Gaming Commission. So surveillance is very technology. You're talking. There's a lot of technology up there.